Hello, good morning, and we're live at 10 o'clock, ready to make some soda breads with you. So this is what we're making today. I have been a bit blue Peter, and I did a small one early. You're going to make two of these if you're making the quantity that I gave you. So say hi, give me some little hearts and some thumbs up in the comments. I know there's a little bit of a lag, and pop in who you are and how old you are if you're cooking along with me today. If you are cooking with some preschoolers, you might want to pre-weigh your ingredients, and I'm going to show you some of that in a minute. So, good morning, give me a wave, give me a thumbs up, give me some hearts, pop your name in the comments so I can give you a shout out to all my lovely chefs that are cooking along with me this morning. So, thank you for joining me. Thank you for sharing all your makes and bakes this week. The Hidden Heart Cakes from last Saturday were unbelievable. And um, the Birch Music went down really well this week as well. We're going to have to share some of that with Joe Wicks. So I know a few of us, me included, have been having that for breakfast after our Joe Wicks workout. So lovely to see you all. Pop something in the comments. I'm going to, I know there's a bit of a lag as I'm watching through, so I can say hello to you all. So I know who you are, you can tell me where you are and your age. That would be lovely. Hi, so Amelia's there, so I know I've got the boys. Hello, hello. So we're going to be making this lovely bread this morning. You're actually going to make two if you want to. Um, this is half the recipe that I've given you. So if you're cooking, there's a couple of kids in your kitchen, you can, they can make one each. Hi, Freddie. So that would be amazing. And who have I got? Hi, Steph. This is lovely. So nice to see some of you guys. Hi, Claudia. Hi, Pia. And hi, Lisa. All the way from Germany. Fantastic. We've had... Germany, we've had Israel, we've had America. So yeah, if you're somewhere more exciting than we are, although it's lovely and sunny here in London this morning, so that's very nice, you can you can say hello. So I'm just going to run through very briefly some of the ingredients, just so you can make sure that you've got that out on your worktop ready to go. For those of you that have struggled to find them, there is a pinned post right at the top of this Facebook page. Um, and hi, you've got Chloe and Amy as well. Hello, hi Charlotte. Um, there's a pinned post right at the top where I've put a little summary of what we're using this morning. Don't worry, because I'm going to read that out for you. But if you sign up, there's a newsletter. You get a newsletter each week that talks about ingredients and some key activities, and it will have the two recipes for each week to download. So each week there's going to be a live class on Wednesday at 2.30 and then Saturday morning at 10 o'clock like now um, and they, I will post them all here that's why I've decided to do them on Facebook so you can watch them at any time you want they're automatically here for you to watch on replay so if you're watching on replay hello as well you can also add to the comments hi Julia again hi Zara from London that's fantastic lots of you hi James hi Thomas hi Megan hi Armin oh you're all ready oh 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 I've got to, got to get going so let me have I anybody that I've not, anybody I've missed? So I'm just going to run through the ingredients. And then if anybody has any questions about substitutes, I know I've had a lot of questions this week. So I'm going to try and run through those as we go. So you don't want bread flour today. Bread flour is pretty scarce, but you actually don't need it for this recipe anyway. If you have bread flour, great. And we'll do another bread recipe another time. Soda bread is the quickest and simplest bread. And you just need some self-raising flour. Or if you don't have that, plain flour is fine. So that's the blue one. So I've got some white self-raising flour. I've also got some wholemeal self-raising flour. And again, if you've got wholemeal plain, you can use that too. If you don't have wholemeal, just do it all with the white flour, okay? So that's your first substitute. So that's some of my dry ingredients. Then I've got some salt. So you will need some salt in your bread. A little bit is good, even though I know we're all trying to cut down on the salt, okay? So... Don't do that. Hi, you're not joining me like Sarah. Hi, you're fine. It's all perfect. Now, I've had a lot of questions about bicarbonate. So bicarbonate is a little white powder. Oh, loving all the hearts and the thumbs up. Hello, you guys. Um, bicarbonate is the thing that you're going to use if you've ever done those volcano science experiments. It's really good fun. And basically, if you know from your science, those of you that have been working on this this week, you have acids and alkalis, and they react together to make a big reaction. So this is an alkali bicarbonate, and it reacts with an acid like lemon juice or yogurt, which is sour, which we're going to use today, and it makes that fizz, and that's what makes the bread rise. Baking powder, which is this one, is a bit more stable, and this is what we use in cakes. 
So baking powder has a bit of bicarbonate in it, so a bit of that alkali, but it also has some sort of acid in there as well that it can bang itself together and work out in the cake. So if you actually look at ingredients, and I'm going to show you this because nobody ever believes me, bicarbonate just says sodium carbonates. Baking powder says sodium carbonates, but also diphosphates and rice flour. So it's a bit more stable. If you don't have bicarbonate, you can use some baking powder today, and I'll suggest that you put in a bit more lemon juice just to get that fizz and that reaction going, okay? So I hope that's a little bit um, clear. I was talking to somebody this morning who said I sounded very Heston about it, and I'm sure I don't sound very Heston, but hopefully that's a little science explanation for you. Who have I got here? Hi, Kate. Hi, you. It's lovely to see you guys. And then I've got loads of really nice seeds. These are all optional. And actually what I've done is I've stuck some on a little bit of paper so I can show you what I've got. So you can shout out to me, what's that big one? Oh, up to the opposite end, isn't it? What's the big one there? The, um, the big green one, does anybody know? We cooked with it this week when we were doing our birch and muesli. So anybody that was watching that will know. I'll give you a little clue. It comes from the big orange vegetable that we have at Halloween. Does anybody know? So I've got lots of thumbs up, so I'm hoping again you can shout out to me too. So this one is a pumpkin seed. The one in the middle, the white one, which we also used this week, let me stick down that sellotape so you can see it a bit better. You might have growing out in your garden, that would be a lovely thing to grow now. That's the sunflower seed. And then this little one, oh, I'm doing it the wrong way, aren't I, on the end, um, is a linseed, golden linseed. And that's just from a mixed packet, but you can have whatever you want. I've also got some of these teeny ones. I don't know if you know what they are. You often see them on bread. And they go from another beautiful flower, a red flower. And they are poppy seeds. So I'm going to pop some seeds in mine. You can also have raisins. So I've got some raisins. That makes it nice and sweet if you want it like a breakfast bread. So feel free, whatever dry bits and bobs that you want to put in, pop, 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 oh, put in is fine. So yeah, Julia, you've got that right pumpkin seed. So good. So those are all my dry ingredients. Now for my wet ingredients, you're going to need some milk. If anybody is non-dairy, then just use, I like oat leaf or whatever you've got, something with not too strong a flavour. And then I've got a nice big pot of yoghurt. These are great actually to buy from like your local kind of corner shop. This is a nice Greek yoghurt. Um, again, if you are going non-dairy, then use whatever you want. I wouldn't use something very flavoured. So a lot of the Alfro ones are quite like, you know, chocolatey or vanilla-y. It will give obviously a really strong flavour. Um, and the coconut collaboratives, I think, are the not so the mildest of the coconut yogurts, um, and they're really nice. If you're going to use those, you will need some lemon juice because normal yogurt is effectively fermented, and that's what we want. It's got the acid in it, whereas a lot of the man-made ones, the dairy-free ones, don't. So you'll want a bit of acid. And I'm going to show you what happens with that and why we do it. Now, if anybody doesn't have yogurt, do not panic. Hello, hello, lots of lovely smiley faces. It's so nice to see you all. Uh, would chia seeds work? For, um, sprinkling and things, yeah, I probably wouldn't use the chia seeds so much because they absorb a lot of water and in a bread they're probably not going to be so great. Um, so we'll use them for something else, it's a really good question. Chia are like flax seeds as well, they're great as an egg replacer. So poppy seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, linseeds, whatever you've got. Some of you here have got poppy seeds and other things, yeah. If you don't have the yogurt, Charlotte, just use the milk. But what I'm going to get you to do with your milk, so you could maybe in a minute when we weigh it out, I'm going to show you. I'm going to put a little bit of milk in here. This is just to show you what's going to happen. And I'm going to add in a splash of lemon juice. If you've got fresh lemon, that's fine. But these are brilliant to keep in the fridge for things like this. So you can see it's quite liquidy, as you'd expect. And if I give it a stir, you can already start to see. We'll leave it for a bit. And on the side of the glass, can you see, it's starting to get little bits. And basically what we've done by adding that lemon juice is it soured the milk and that's what you want. It will kind of curdle. So I'm just going to put that there and I'll show you in a minute. So for those of you that don't have any yogurt, that's what you want to do. Just a bit of lemon juice in your milk, okay? So that should answer that question. So those are my wet things and my dry things. And we're going to keep the wet and the dry separate today. And it's a super easy bread. Honestly, that is, so the rest of you will make two of these or a really big one. So if you don't have a lot of flour and, and you're keeping it close to you because it's a precious commodity right now, then just do half, okay? And just half up the ingredients that I'm, I'm going to talk to you about. All right? So I think time to get started. So hopefully you guys have got aprons on and hopefully you've washed your hands. I have washed my hands. So really, really good wash and tie up hair as well. So I'm just going to do that and then we'll get cracking. 
Now, what else do you need? You will need some scales, a nice big mixing bowl. I'm using a glass one so you can see just what I'm doing. You will need a little teaspoon and probably just a, a I've got a regular metal um, tablespoon just to stir with. And you will need a knife. Now, those of you that have been cooking with me for a while know that I love these. These are amazing for kids. These are just lettuce knives. Um, they're not very sharp, but they're the same size as a chef's knife because we're going to need to make a nice score in the top of the bread. If you don't have this or you don't want to use it, a ruler, a clean ruler is also fine, okay? So, or any other knife. So, what sort of baking mold do you need? None at all. We are just going to shape it with our hands. So, all you need is a baking tray afterwards, okay? So, this is literally it. A bowl, a spoon. I've got a little jug because that's quite nice for you guys to pour. And if you're working with preschoolers this morning, then it's really nice. All these are fantastic motor skills. So, pour some of the liquid in here, get them to pour it in. Um, the only other thing that I haven't told you is I've got a nice bag of porridge oats here because I'm going to sprinkle some on the top. So for those of you that were asking me about seeds, put the porridge oats on the top. That's nice too, okay? Perfect. So, so this is the one as I was saying to you. And actually what I'm doing today is you'll see there's a nice shape on the, on the top. Can you see what shape that is? Those of you that have done maths this week might recognize this shape. You can tell me what shape that is. So it's a nice little cross. Now, some people believe because it's Irish soap bread that it's the sign of the cross. Um, other people say that you make a cross in it so that the fairies can come out, which I quite like too. So you can choose whether it's fairy bread or you're going to make a cross, all right? And then I'm going to show you something really fun at the end. I'm going to show you how to make some butter for your bread, okay? So let's get started. How I add you mix the lemon juice, what do you add it to? So if you, if you have no yogurt, you just add the lemon juice to your milk to sour it. That's what I've done a bit in here just to show you. So if you look at this now, if I bring this up and show you on my spoon, can you see here that it's already kind of got bits in it? And this is just semi-skimmed milk. Can you see what's left on my spoon? It's curdled. And that's what you want. So for those of you that don't have any um, yogurt, just do this with your milk when we do the milk, okay? And for those of you that are using, um, that don't have bicarbonate, you might want to put a bit of lemon juice in, and this is effectively what it will do, okay? So there's a really good science-y thing today. We're learning lots of science in the kitchen about acids and alkalis and what happens. This curdles, and I'm going to show you what happens when we make butter too, okay? Perfect. So what I want you to do is take your bowl. I'm going to move this here so you can see it. If you've got a set of scales to turn them on, you've got these nice electric ones that most of you will have. There's a little on-off button, the on-off tear button, and there's another one that changes the units. So when we measure our um, dry things, we're going to measure in G for grams, okay? So we're going to pop that on, and if you're working with little ones, then just pre-weigh it so that you've got it in front of them. And then what I want you to find is I want you to find your flour. Now, for those of us that's got wholemeal and whites, you want 225 grams of each. If you don't have, and you've only got one kind of flour, you're going to need 450, okay? So I'm going to pour in 225 of my white. So you guys can do this with me. So I'm just pouring in that one. Perfect. So that's 225 of white. And for those of you that are new to using electric scales, if you just press that on-off button again, it goes back to zero, and then we don't have to do any maths, and I can just put another 225 in. So it's 225 of white, 225 of brown, or if you've only got one kind of flour, 450 of the one flour, okay? So we'll all do that now so that you've got the right amount of flour in there. And I know I can't see you guys today, so you can keep giving me a thumbs up or any questions, and then I know you're, you're with me. And I'm just going to give it a gentle mix. And you can see the wholemeal is not hugely brown. It's got a few little grains in it. It just makes it a little bit different. I like it. So, once you've got your flour weighed in, you can then add in your bicarbonate. Now, if you don't have bicarbonate and you've just got baking powder, do exactly what I'm doing, but we'll add in a bit more lemon juice later, okay? Thank you for the thumbs up, then I know that everybody's good. I'm just checking here on the comments because I know there's a little bit of a lag. So if I've not answered you immediately, it's not because I'm ignoring you, okay? So we've got some of our dry things in. So we're going to take a nice spoon of bicarbonate. I'm going to pop that in. And you'll see, although you think a lot of things are white, look how really white that bicarbonate is in there compared to some of the other things, the flour, okay? And then I put in a teaspoon of salt as well. It really helps. 
Hello, lots of lovely hearts, that's great. So I know you're all cooking with me and it's all working. If you don't wanna add any salt, don't. Um, but I think a little bit is, is good and it's not a lot, okay? So a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of my oven. Yes, good question, Sunny, I've forgotten to tell you. Preheat the oven, that is a fantastic tip. So I didn't wanna waste my electricity and put it on this morning. So the oven needs to go on to 180 fan or 200 regular. So I'm gonna do that now, so you can do that as well. So 180 fan or 200 regular. Thank you for testing me, that was fantastic. Yes, I had my oven on this morning to bake it and I turned it off. So perfect, yeah, oven on to 180 fan, 200. And then in our bowl, we've got our dry ingredients. So we've got our flour, We've got a teaspoon of bicarbonate and got one teaspoon of um, salt as well. And you can just mix those in now just to spread it, okay? So nice, easy mixing. And then we've got lots of seeds. So if you're adding seeds or you're adding raisins, you can just chuck some in. Just do it by eye. I'm going to put some poppy seeds. And seeds are so healthy for us. And what I love about this in bread is they play hide and seek. So if you put some in, see how many you're going to be able to see when you tear off a chunk of that bread and eat it. That's going to be really good. So I'm just going to mix that in, and then depending on how seedy you like it, you'll be able to see whether you want to add some more in. I might add a few more because I like a nice little seed of bread. And if you haven't got, if you've only got white flour and you haven't got wholemeal, it's really nice to add some seeds in, like a kind of granny loaf. And they're all right already, aren't they? Can you see? So you can see maybe a few little seeds in there. That's kind of good me. All right. Let me just check if anybody has any questions. I think it's all good. This is lovely. So I'm going to move my bit out of the way. So those are my seeds. I'm going to come back to those because I'm going to sprinkle some on the top afterwards. Okay. So that is all our dry stuff. Now while you're still doing that, I just want to show you how amazing is this milk that I put lemon juice in. Do you remember it was liquid like milk? Look at it now. Can you see? It's actually got proper lumps and clumps. If you remember the Little Miss Muffet song, Curds and Whey, that's basically what that is. And that is just soured. And if you smell it, it smells a bit lemon like so I put quite a bit in to show you that. And you can see it's sticking to the side of the glass, which milk normally wouldn't. It's solid. Um, so for those of you that have got non-dairy, for those of you that have got yogurt and are just using milk, this is what we want to do, okay? And this is what's going to happen. Can you have raisins and dry cranberries? Yeah, that would be amazing. That would be really nice. I love something slightly sweet for breakfast. It's like a, not a cake, but that sort of thing. So spread it with butter and you can have it with jam or toast with yummy. Definitely. I would put those in. So if you're adding raisins, put them in now. I'm just going to keep mine a bit more safe so I can have it for lunch. So um, up to you. Good. So, right. Now we're going to do our wet stuff. So I'm going to use a jug, but that's up to you. Um, you don't have to. Now, I've given you the quantities for yogurt in grams. So if you've got your yogurt and you're using yogurt, do this with me. So if you're using the yogurt, you want 250 grams, okay? So just spoon it in. My yogurt is a Greek yogurt, so it's quite thick. If yours is not as thick, don't panic. Whatever you've got is fine, okay? And what I want you guys to do is have a little smell of the yogurt. I'm going to do that when I've filled mine up. So that is... That's my 250, and mm, it's got that really nice sour, sour smell, and that is that little bit of acid that's going to get that bicarbonate fizzing, okay, and that's why we're keeping the wet and the dry separate, because as soon as we put the wet in, it's going to start with that fizz, and we're going to need to get in the oven, okay? So, if you're not using yogurt, you want to add in 250 of milk, okay, um, with a bit of lemon juice, all right? So for those of you that are not doing that, let me move that out of the way. So all I've got here is 250 grams of yogurt. And then for the milk, we're gonna, we measure liquids in a different way, don't we? We don't measure in grams, we measure in, let's see if you can tell me. I know you guys know. How much milk if you're not adding the yogurt? So just do the, do the put the milk in, put 250 grams of milk, and then we'll do the second bit, um, but together. Those of you that are good at maths, you tell me, what's 250 plus 175? That's a bit tricky for a Saturday morning, isn't it? That's the answer, so like 250 plus 175. <laughs> 3.35. So, right, then you're going to pop your scales onto zero, change over to millilitres, 
and then we're going to pour in our milk, okay? So you have 175 of milk. We just add it on top of the yogurt. If you're just using milk, just all pour it together. It's absolutely fine. And it'll be really nice to see the different breads because it really shouldn't make much difference. Traditionally, this is made with something called buttermilk. And I'm going to show you how we make buttermilk when we make butter. It's like the byproduct of making butter. And you can drink it and it's really nice. And I know it's a bit of a weird ingredient. You wouldn't normally choose to buy it. But it's one of those weird ingredients that you might actually find at the supermarket now. So if you find it, it's just soured milk and you can use that. Okay. Milk. Yeah, absolutely, Emma. That's what I'm doing. So I've got my yogurt and my milk here, and I'm just going to slowly stir them, and that's because I've got thick Greek yogurt, okay, just to combine them a bit. If you are just using milk, if you are just using a non-dairy yogurt and or milk, pop a splash of the lemon juice in here now and give it a little stir so it starts to do this lovely curdling like I showed you before. Can you see now? It's completely curdled. And if I was to sieve this, you'd actually get the white lumps can you see there on my spoon and it's slightly yellow there which is like the curds in the way okay and that's actually essentially that's how you make cheese soft cheese is you kind of curdle the milk um, especially with a full fat milk and all of the fat goes to one side makes your cheese or like your butter and then all of the liquid comes off okay so hi Rebecca you missed the beginning you're just starting you can watch after the Facebook Live is finished. Otherwise, I'm just going to do a recap. And I know you can. Yes, Ed, it was 175 of milk. So I'll just do a little recap for anybody that's joined or is not quite sure. So in a bowl, you want your dry ingredients. So I've got 225 grams of wholemeal flour, 225 grams of white self-raising flour. If you only have one kind of flour, just 450 grams of the white flour, okay? Then I've added one teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. And again, if you don't have bicarbonate, you can just use a baking powder, but add a bit of lemon juice in. And then I've had a teaspoon of salt. And then I've chucked in a load of mixed seeds. So I've got pumpkin and sunflower and linseed. And I've added in some little um, poppy seeds. Some of you have added in raisins. Some of you added in cranberries, whatever you want. Okay, so all of our dry things, give them a mix. And then our wet things, I've put mine in a jug, but you can do it in a bowl. You want to mix them separately first. 175 millilitres of milk and 250 grams of yogurt. If you're using the baking powder, if you're using non-dairy yogurt or milk, and if you're using um, only milk, put some lemon juice in here so it curdles a bit like this. Loving the thumbs up. Thank you for when you're okay. So, James, Thomas, I think you're good. Rebecca, hopefully you're good. But come along and watch and you can find a up or you can watch it on replay okay so when you've got all your dry and you've got all of your wet separate what we're now going to do is we're going to add them together okay so you're just going to pour in all of the wet stuff to the dry stuff give it a really good scrape out to get it all out there and then with your spoon you're just going to start to mix it together it's going to look like not a lot is happening for a minute and it's going to get harder we're going to have a joe wicks arm workout here okay and I know we don't want to make too much mess, so we want to do as much as possible in the bowl. So you're going to mush it and smush it with the back of the spoon, scrape it down until you get a nice ball. Now remember, this one, or this recipe that we're doing, will make either one big bread or two of these. So at this point, if you're sharing with your brother and sister, or your mum and dad, whoever you're sharing with, you can get it in a ball and then you can have half of it each, so you can all start to knead it, okay? So hopefully everybody's been able to catch up now. So you can see it's starting to get quite stiff. I'm starting to work quite hard. And it's nice when you do it in a glass bowl because then you can see all the bits at the bottom that you haven't picked up, okay? So you're just going to keep going. Who's finding this hard work? Oh, a thumbs up. That's not hard enough work then unless mum or dad is doing that. Because that means that you've not got both hands scraping and smushing in the bowl for me. Hi, Anthony, if I spelled that right, pronounced that right. Oh, it's replying to Sarah. Hi, it's nice to see all of you and your friends online. So it's kind of coming together in a nice, big, stiff ball. Oh, hard work, huh? So it should sort of look a bit like this. I'm just going to clean off my spoon so you can see. I'm going to take all of this out of the way. So it should start to look like that, okay? And I'm going to show you the bottom of my bowl, so you can see there's still a bit of flour in the bottom, but it's starting to be quite clean, okay? Because I don't like too much mess on my worktop. So when it's really like that, what you're going to do is you're going to tip the whole thing out, 
and give it a really good scrape out because those of you that have been doing lots of nice craft projects this week will know that flour and water makes a gluey thing. It's a bit like wallpaper paste. So if I leave all of this bread dough in here and I put it in the sink and I wash it with water, I'm just going to get the ick. So I want to make it as clean as possible for later. So there's my pretty clean bowl, okay? So I'm going to stick that in the sink. And then what we're going to do is we're going to knead it. So if you have your hand, you've got a nice big press here. You've got a nice little bone. It's the heel of your hand. And we're going to push it. So we don't want to squish it too much with our fingers. So I'm going to push it, turn it, push it, turn it. And what I'm trying to do, I'm going to do it with two hands because I've got double the dough. But you guys can split it. Is we, You can see all this mess on my work surface here, can't you? All my flour. And I basically want to clean it up. So I'm going to roll it over like a sausage on top of all of the mess I've got until I've cleaned it up and that dough comes together. Now it's a bit sticky, it is supposed to be sticky. Paul Hollywood loves to say wet it is better and I think that is a good, a good thing. So you don't want it to be too dry because you have really dry bread otherwise. So it doesn't need a lot of kneading, it's not like regular bread where we're kneading and working the yeast and the flour. So that's kind of what it is. So usually I say to you, you have very, very clean hands, you can see I've got a bit dirty hands. So you will have a bit of dirty hands. Don't worry, don't wash them just yet. We'll wash them in a minute. So we'll just check that you guys are okay, which I'm hoping you are, because my hands are dirty and I can't touch the computer. So if you're making one bread, you can leave it like this. If you want to make two, just take your knife, cut it in two. I'm going to show you roughly. You can tear it. And then what you want to do is roll it in a ball. So you can do this. This is quite nice. Oops, don't drop it. Side to side like that. And then when you put it down, you can just shape it with your hands to get that nice ball shape, okay? So we'll do that. Now, this is where you want your baking tray. So on your baking tray, I don't know if this is what I baked this morning, so I just put a bit of flour, but really what you want is a little sprinkle, just gonna scatter it over, you don't need a lot. And then you can put your bread on the tray, okay? So I'm just gonna clean that up, so I can put that down and show you. So they should be a bit sticky. The flour on the bottom of the tray is just to stop them sticking in the oven. Okay, can you see that? And you don't want them too close together because they're going to kiss, they're going to grow in the oven. So opposite ends of the tray, okay, a bit like that. If you're just doing one, stick it in the middle, it'll be absolutely fine. So hydrated, yes. If the dough is sticky, that's good, okay? Normally I say keep working until your table's clean and your hands are clean, so it will be a bit sticky today. Don't panic, okay? Wetter is better. Um, if you can't shape it like this, if it's so ridiculously all over the place, then um, add a bit more flour in. Or we'll just lightly roll it in flour before you put it on here, okay? But that's good. So we've got nice little rounds. You can see kind of how I'm shaping them. That's all you need to do, okay? Don't need to squish them. And then what you want to do is we're going to brush the top with a bit of milk, which will be a bit like glue, and then we're going to stick some more seeds on. Now, what I like to do, because I don't like to waste, is I've got a little bit of yogurt and milk still left in my jug. I've actually got a bit here from my, my curdled bit, but I'm just gonna pour a little bit there. You can pour a little bit of milk out and use your hands, it really doesn't matter. This is a good activity to get nice and sticky. So I'm just spreading a little bit on the top, and then I'm gonna take a little pinch of whatever you fancy to put on the top. I probably wouldn't put raisins on the top or cranberries because they might burn in the oven. So I'm gonna put a few seeds like this, and then I really like, some porridge oats. So I'm going to put some porridge oats on top as well. In a hand. And you will need to give them a little bit of a pat just so they stick onto the wet. Okay, so a bit like that. Let me hold that up so you guys can see. So I'm just going to wash my hands while you guys get up to speed there. Good. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Charlotte. That's great. Now, this is where you need the knife to let the fairies out. Do you remember? So, what we're going to do is we're going to make our plus sign. I'm going to hold this up so you can see. And we're going to cut. You don't want to cut all the way down. So, we're just going to press down like that and up. So, you can see I've made like a half line. And then we're going to go across again, down and up. Now, if you're making one big one and you want to do more, you can do more. This knife is a lettuce knife. So, it's what I use for little kids. If you've got a bigger knife, like a traditional chef's knife, exactly the same size like this, same thing, press down and up and across 
add up. And that just divides it into four really nice pieces. And what's really nice is then they tear away in chunks. So if you want to do another one, I'll show you, you can go cut each quarter in half. There's a math lesson, four times two is, hopefully you know. So we'll divide it into eight little pieces, okay? So a bit like that. So can you see I've done one of each? So this one here, I've got in eight, and this one I've got in four, okay? So, does it make, matter if the yogurt's fat free? No, I like Greek yogurt, so I normally have Greek yogurt in my fridge and it's a bit thicker, but it doesn't really matter. I tend not to buy a lot of fat free stuff because there's a lot of extra additives, so that's why out of choice I don't have it. But whatever you've got, bio yogurt, like the, the thin stuff, the value stuff, really doesn't make any difference. What you want is that sour stuff. And as I say, if you don't have it sour, just add in a bit of lemon juice. This is the, le the lemon juice that I left before. Can you see? It's just really, you can see all the bits on my spoon. I mean, that literally was milk. It would have just fallen off the spoon. My spoon would have been clean. You can see how grubby the glass is. It's all that is separated into solids and liquids. So that's really what you want, okay? So once these are done, these are gonna go in the oven for 25 minutes. That's all it takes. If you make a bigger one, you might want a bit more. Now I'm gonna put these in the oven. I'm gonna show you how you know with this one when your bread is done, okay? So if you're done, or you're the same as me, whiz it into the oven. If you're not, don't worry, I'm gonna come back and show you what to do, and then I'm gonna make some butter with you. So. Right. So that's it. So when your bread comes out, what you're looking for is that it looks nice and golden. You can see that. And it should be, when you take it off the tray, so when it's really hot, what I did, I put it on a trivet, or if you've got a gas hob, you can just stand it on one of those rings. Obviously, don't pick it up if it's boiling, boiling hot. And it should have, you don't want it to have a soggy bottom, so it should be really nice and hollow. So when you tap it with your fingers, it should sound like that. Can you hear? And all of that flour is just the flour that I use to put on the bottom of my baking tray, okay? And then you can see it's got that really nice cross shape, and if I snap it, it's just going to fall into those four quarters, which is going to be perfect, okay? So that's what you're going to have. You're going to have two like this, unless you made one big one. Um, and that way you can scale up or scale down the recipe. I know some of you were trying different things today in terms of different flours or different baking powder, bicarbonate, whatever. You can totally vary it. And if you wanted to make a really sweet one, you've got flavoured yogurt, try it and see what happens. Soda bread is the easiest and the quickest bread. It needs no yeast and it needs no special bread flour, okay? So it's an amazing one to have. You've probably got most ingredients in your larder most of the time, okay? So... If you guys have got that in, I'm just going to write this down and I'm going to show you how to make butter because this is really fun. So today is a real kind of science lesson with the with cooking, which it often is, with all of the acids and alkalis and solids and liquids and all kinds of things. So lots of fun. So everybody got their bread in the oven. Is everybody good? Let's see. Perfect. This bit you can just watch. So you can make yourself a cup of tea and have a little watch. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Has anybody made butter before? Do you know where butter comes from? Where it's made of? I'll give you a little clue. Let's turn that around so you can see it. Perfect. So I've got a food processor. This is what you're going to need. Um, you can actually do it in a little jar. So if you've got some of this ingredient I'm going to show you and you want a fun activity with the kids, just put it in a jar and shake it. And I'm going to show you. This is easier. So I've just got a little paddle attachment on my food processor. And what I'm gonna pour in is this. I'll see if I can put my hand on it for those of you who can read and you can't cheat. I'm gonna pour it in and you tell me what you think it is. You know. Or I won't want to pour in too much, but does anybody know what that is? Any guesses? It's something that you might have on crumble or I don't know, all kinds of places, let's see. It's cream. So cream is nice and fatty. So if you're doing this at home and you don't have a food processor or you want to do it as an activity, just put it in a little jam jar and shake away. So I'm going to show you. So first of all, is it liquid or solid, my cream? You should know the answer because I just poured that in. So that should be an easy one. So it's liquid when we start. So watch what we're going to do. We're going to put our lid on. It's going to make a bit of a noise. And I'm going to turn on my food processor and watch. <laughs> Getting nice and bubbly, nice and airy, if you can see there. And I'm going to wait a minute until you see something rather special. So 
So those of you that like scones, you might have whipped cream on top, and that's what we're going to make first, okay? So it can take a bit of a while to I'm taking this straight out of the fridge. So if you're going to do this, you might want to bring it up to room temperature first, just so it's a bit easier. I wouldn't normally suggest that you make butter, but if you happen to have any cream in the fridge and you're a bit short, or you want a little activity to do with the kids, this is really, really fun, okay? So, it's taken a bit of a while, but we'll wait until it just gets a little bit thicker and I can show you. And then all you need, all I've got here is a bowl of water and a little glass that I'm gonna show you and finish with that afterwards. So we can have a little drink. I might need a little bowl, actually. So I can see it's getting a bit thicker. So I'm going to show you. Let's turn that off for a second. Perfect. So here we go. Just you can see a couple of minutes. Can you see now? I could pour it. It's not liquid, is it? It's solid. So that's that's um, cream. If I give it a little scrape down, this would be delicious on scones, wouldn't it? So that's what I've got there. I'm just going to give it a scrape down. And then I'm going to keep going. So let's watch what's going to happen if I keep going. And you might have done this at home. If you take your eye off when you're beating your cream, sometimes you go a little bit too far. So I'm going to show you what happens. So it's getting thicker. And I'm going to need to scrape the sides down. So I'm just going to keep scraping this down. So I didn't do too much today because I don't want too much of this. Can you see it's getting a bit yellower? Okay, so that means it's beating a bit more. Let's scrape all of that down. Keep going. And you guys see, you're going to watch and see something quite exciting here in a minute, okay? So we've got double single cream. I've got um, double cream, but you could work with single cream. So double cream usually. Okay. So you can see it's starting, can you see it's starting to rise up the sides and pull back down again? I probably haven't done to enough really, if you do loads, it's easier to see, but I wanted to do it in this so you can see today. So you can see it's starting to get a little bit, i show you here, like that would be a bit too much for me, my cream. You've probably overbeaten it very slightly. And you're basically just going to keep going and you're going to start to see an interesting change in a minute. So what happens in cream, because um, it's full fat, like full fat milk, you've got all the fat little, imagine two little balls, you've got fat balls and you've got liquid balls, and then we're banging them together all the time until that little blue where the fat is inside pops, okay? And then the fat, ah, here we go. Can you see this? So if you've ever made cream and it's gone like that, you think, oh no, too much, it's split. A bit like our lemon juice. Can you see that there? Doesn't look very nice, does it? Is absolutely fine to eat. And you can see that that colour that was white when we started has now gone yellow. And that what, what was liquid has now gone a bit solid. So we're still going to keep going. Watch this. You're going to start to see it very soon. So all those little balloons, which have got the fat and the water in together in the cream, banging together. We're popping the balloon. And then the fat's going to come out one side. And you're going to see something else. So all the fat bits are going to make friends. And all the other bits are going to make friends. So you'll watch. Can you see now? what I've got in here, that is pretty amazing. Can you see in there? I'm going to take that out. So what is stuck here is the butter, which is the fat, which is yellow. Can you see? So I'm going to scrape that off there and I'm going to fish this bit out with my hands, just gently. Can you see? So that is solid, that's butter, and here is my liquid. And if I pour this, I'm going to pour this into a cup this is buttermilk. So this is the byproduct of making butter. And that is, you can see, I haven't strained it, but it's basically like milk. It's really nice. It's slightly sour. This is the stuff you can buy from the supermarket you could use instead of yogurt. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give it a squeeze. Yeah, lots of hearts. Thank you. This is so much fun to do. So it's a bit greasy. You can see all that water coming off, and that's the buttermilk. So I've made a nice ball, and then I'm just going to put it in the water and give my butter a bit of a bath, basically. And then that is what you've got. So you could, you can see I've made quite a bit of butter. You could just 
shape it into a nice sausage shape like that, pat the ends, you can flavor it, and then you could put it in some silver foil in the fridge um, and keep it as a little sausage, whatever you want, or you could just make a nice little butter pat, shape it out, you know, put it in a dish, flatten it down, make a nice little shape that there, you could put your initials or something in there. So that is literally how you make butter. So this is to drink, just tastes like milk, quite creamy milk. For those of you that remember all the kind of silver top and really like that. And this water is obviously just to throw away. And that is how simple it is to make butter. So I'm just going to clean my hand. So if you want to do that at home and you've got any cream, that was a little bonus I wanted to add in today. You could have fresh butter with your warm, fresh bread. Nothing, nothing like that. So your bread is going to be done in 25 minutes. It's going to look like this. It's going to be really lovely and warm, okay? Soda bread is absolutely, uh, 25 minutes, yes, on um, 180 fan or 200 degrees on a regular oven. Sorry, I missed that. So that was the same. Question, perfect. Okay, yeah. It's all on the recipe cards. Um, it wasn't pinned to the top, so I just left you with the ingredients for today. Um, remember, all of these breads that we're making have no preservatives in. So if you come to your bread the next day and you think it's a little bit dry, it is not stale. That just shows you how much preservative is in shop-bought bread. So I think this is a good thing. So if it's ever a little bit dry, just cut it and toast it. It's super, super delicious. You can always whiz bread into breadcrumbs and keep them in the freezer and have them sprinkled on, I don't know, you know, lasagnas and any kind of pasta bakes. I do that a lot. Um, or you can turn them into croutons. There's lots and lots of things. So don't throw it away if you've got any questions of what you can do with bread. Um, so those should be in the oven. Mine is not quite ready and I'm having a look at mine and it's already got so much bigger. So you'll see it gets bigger and you'll see it falls away from the crust. This really helps it rise in the oven, okay? So this is the simplest bread. I hope you really like this. It's so tasty. I want you to share all your photos with me today so I can say well done to everybody that's cooked. If you're going to make your own butter at home, feel free to share that because it's pretty cool, isn't it? So we've got nice butter for lunch and like I said, you can add some herbs in or Put salt in if you want salted butter, whatever you want to do. It's a really fun activity and you can Google it and look up a bit more about it and you'll find out about all the science, like I said, liquids and solids and separating. And do this thing at home with, um, with the lemon juice and the milk because it's amazing, isn't it? Can you see? It's basically cheese. So if I sieve this through um, a sieve lined with a new J-cloth, you would find that all the solids sit at the top and all the liquid goes to the bottom and it's curds and whey. It's basically cottage cheese or ricotta or something like that. So cottage cheese is basically all the little bits like this, and ricotta is when you squish it all together like I did with the butter and you make it into a more of a solid, okay? And the other stuff that comes out the bottom, usually you put salt in, is not so nice to drink because it's a bit salty. Thank you for the hearts, I love that. So next week, um, same time, so we're gonna be Saturday morning at 10, we're gonna be Wednesday at 2.30, everything will be here so you can watch it on replay. So I'm sorry we're not doing Zoom, I know some of you loved it, it was just super noisy and a lot of people stressed out with the technology, so I know this is just much more straightforward for you. Um, next week, we're going to be doing falafel, so that is going to be on Wednesday. You're going to need some dry chickpeas. Um, I think they're better than tinned one, but if you can get tinned one, then that's fine too. You need a big food process. There's a lot of whizzing. Um, you just, if you have dry chickpeas, you're going to soak them overnight. Um, add some parsley if you've got, tahini if you've got, onions if you've got, really easy. And for those of you that are older, it's going to be a really great lesson in frying stuff. So you need, um, if you've got any kind of fryer, or I just use a big wok or a big saucepan with some sunflower or something like that. And then on Saturday, you're going to be making a fruit crumble, so something nice for the weekend. So any fruit that you want, I usually do apple, maybe with some pears, you could put dried fruit in. If you've got frozen berries, like blueberries, that's really yummy too. You can put raisins in. And then you can be a bit creative with your toppings. So anybody that is gluten-free can use gluten-free. If you're dairy free, just use pure or a dairy free bread and a butter. And we're going to do lots of crumbling techniques. And I like to put porridge oats in mine and almonds and some flaked nuts on the top and anything like that just to make it a bit healthier. You can add those seeds and things like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed today. Thank you for the lovely feedback and thank you for joining me. Do share with friends. It would be lovely. I'm trying to make sure we've got loads and loads of people from all around the world. It would be super fun. I know a lot of people are joining on afterwards because 10 o'clock morning Saturday is the middle of the night for people across the other side of the world. 
Um, it's so nice to make bread together. I'm also going to ask you, let me know in the comments if you're now finding it easier to get bread flour. So bread flour is strong blue flour. I would say strong white flour, strong brown flour. And I want to be able to do some bread with you, maybe like pizza dough and stuff like that. So I'm not going to do it next week. I'm going to do it hopefully the week after, by which point I'm hoping most of you will have got some bread. And you will need yeast as well. So that's the little dried sachets of yeast. So if you can start thinking about to get hold of that, that's brilliant. For those of you that ask me about other breads, sourdough, I have some sourdough starting that's pulled up behind me. You are very welcome for any that lives near me to come and get some, because that is also a really easy bread to make. You don't need yeast, you just use the starter and bread flour. And for anybody that wants a little less than that, if God, I happily do a little video, because it's, it's a really amazing activity to do, especially now we're all cooped at home. So, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for all the love and the thumbs up. I really want to see your breads. Um, take it out, have a lovely picnic in the garden, uh, in the sunshine, and let me know what it tastes like. Take care, have an amazing day. Bye.